People have used objects for sexual stimulation throughout human history. We were reminded of how far back this goes in 2005 when archaeologists discovered intriguing artifacts in a cave in the Swabian Alps from the Paleolithic era. One of the important artifacts found was a phallic shaped and highly polished stone 20 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. Well, it's not necessary to elaborate more on what this was used for. Similar artifacts are being discovered all the time. This particular found dates back as far as 28,000 years. This gives a rough idea of how long people have been creating artifacts for the purpose of sexual stimulation. From the Paleolithic era until today. From mechanical, steam-powered, electronic, battery-powered, to smart vibrators with Bluetooth connection. Already in 2010, the first sex robot, Roxy, was introduced. What once was science fiction became a reality. But what are sex robots? A sex robot can be defined as an artificial entity that is used for sexual purposes, for example sexual stimulation and release, and it meets the following three criteria. First, humanoid form, meaning it represents a human or human-like form. Second, human-like movement and behavior. And last, some degree of artificial intelligence, meaning that it's capable of interpreting and responding to information in its environment. This may be minimal, as simple as pre-programmed behavioral responses or more sophisticated like human equivalent intelligence. Defined in this manner, sex robots are different from existing sex toys and sex dolls. Most existing sex toys do not have a humanoid form. They are, typically, representations of body parts. These partial representations may have some human-like movement, but they do not have much in the way of intelligence. Although this is certainly changing with the rise of smart tech and the Internet of Things, sex dolls, on the other hand, do have a humanoid form, but are passive, inanimate, and unintelligent. Sex robots have more going on. The closest we get to a legal definition is through the European Parliament Resolution on Civil Law Rules on Robotics that identifies the characteristics of smart robots. These refer to the acquisition of autonomy through sensors and exchanging data with environment and the trading and analyzing of that data. They can be self-learning, there is at least a minor physical support, they can adapt their behavior and actions to the environment, and of course, they lack life in the biological sense. Having a sex robot can be entertaining and satisfying. The robot's purpose is to satisfy sexual needs and fulfill desires. Sex with a robot is accessible and does not necessitate a human relationship. This in many ways resembles prostitution, however owning a sex robot may prove more economical because it requires a single purchase. It can be more than just sex, it can fulfill the need for companionship and prove as a useful tool in overcoming low self-esteem, loneliness and depression. It eradicates fear of rejection as it serves the fulfillment of sexual fantasies and fetishes. Only one party instructs how the following act should proceed. While this is not sex in the true biological sense, it may feel like it. On the plus side, a responsible use eliminates sexual transmitted diseases and does not lead to unwanted pregnancies. However, we must vary of how this may lead to a an inability to perform in human sexual interaction. Relying mainly on robots may cause humans to lose their skills in reciprocal human intercourse. Sex robots may harm human couples' intimacy. If we rely entirely on machines to perform, how would this affect human intercourse? While some may imagine having a threesome with a machine would spice things up, regular use may affect couples' intimacy. Social stigma and exclusion for being interested in sex machines may be a possible consequence. Most of the current users of sex dolls are male and most sex dolls designed are female. Hypersexualization of female bodies leads to objectification of women. 
Already today, women's bodies are very sexualized in media and marketing. Physical support of sex robots based on existing sex dolls continues the trend of hypersexualization of bodies. With sex bots and privacy, a big issue is the extremely sensitive character of the personal data these machines will have access to. Sex bots will have the ability to sense, process and record the world around them. All this with the purpose of providing the most authentic sexual experience. During sexual involvement with a robot, a human could give access to data concerning health, sex life and genetics through disposing body fluids. The GDPR states that processing these types of sensitive data must be in compliance with all six data protection principles, meaning for example the data minimization principle and integrity and confidentiality. It must also satisfy at least one processing condition, which could be consent from the user. A challenge here will be to ensure an informed consent and transparency as to what will actually happen to the collected data. Sex bots may also have access to different sensitive information than what is legally defined as sensitive. Psychological research shows that when human-like features such as a face are introduced to a machine, our interaction with the machine becomes more human-like. We become more self-aware, show more empathy and share more with the machine. With an intelligent sex bot, this can be very risky, knowing that emotional intimacy often leads to sharing very private information about our lives. The robot could end up knowing more about the person's private life than a spouse or even a therapist would. It's not difficult to imagine that this information is attractive to others, whether to be used for targeted marketing or to blackmail or harass sex bot users. People's private images are already being shared involuntarily online with horrible outcomes like suicide. Welcoming an intelligent recording device into your bedroom will give access to even more private information. Sensitive information is a goldmine for corporations and criminals, and this should call for a strict approach to regulating this future technology. To combat the privacy threats, we need to continue developing safeguards such as strict limitations on what data may be collected and how the user must be properly informed about this. Robot technology today is still in a very primitive stage of its evolution. It's difficult to imagine how it will change the world, but we do know that it's developing at a very high pace. When discussing privacy in robots, some seem to forget about the social interests at play. Privacy and personal space plays a vital part in human psychology, and psychologists stress the importance of solitude and mental time off more than ever in our age of 24-7 digital access. Having a robot companion available for unlimited social and physical interaction will in one way or another have a huge impact on us. Privacy's social function is therefore very important to also have in mind when discussing our future companions. Self-learning abilities of sex bots enable them to make autonomous decisions that cannot be attributed neither to the user nor to the manufacturer. With that in mind, if something goes wrong, who is going to pay for damages? Under the current state of affairs, it is not clear whether the applicable regulatory framework can provide a satisfactory answer to that question. On the one hand, product liability rules might not be applicable since a manufacturer is liable only if damage defect in the product. With that present defect in a sex bot, the manufacturer cannot be held liable. On the other hand, special regimes of strict liability can be imposed. This would make manufacturers liable even if there is no defect in a sex bot, the code is flawless, the highest standard of care was applied and a sex bot was properly tested. A claimant would have to prove the causal link between the damaging event and the sex robot. Regardless of whether the former or latter scenario applies, such reality may hinder innovation and investment in the field of sex robots. A compulsory insurance scheme could be a viable solution to this problem. A compulsory insurance scheme should be provide legal certainty 
and at the same time safeguard continuous innovation and investment in the industry. Liability allocation should look like this. When a damage is caused by autonomous actions of a sex robot, insurance company would cover damages, making a manufacturer and a user free from civil liability. Should law tackle the question of human inability to relate to humanoid robots as objects? Legal systems established legal personality as a helpful fiction used to give actors rights and subject them to obligations. However, it appears that legal and social systems decide whom or what they confer with rights and obligations, regardless of whether an entity is a natural person. It is possible that legal systems and legal personhood will evolve, as it has previously, only more rapidly in the future. Legal systems used to discriminate among categories of people who are today considered one category – men, women and slaves – had distinguishably different rights and obligations in the past. So what if there would be a new category for robots? If we consider sex bots as a special category of agents with rights and obligations, we must consider the different functions and social benefits of legal personhood. Legal personhood must enable sex bots to function in society and engage in socio-economic interactions in the expected context and enjoy legal protections while doing so. Intelligence is important, but is not indicative of personhood without more. It may be detrimental for a legal system to romanticize human-like capabilities of artificial intelligence and for that reason only create new legal personalities. If we want to introduce legal personhood for robots, we first need to answer the following. What issues would legal personhood for robots solve? The current legal framework can successfully tackle all the challenges that sex robots pose. However, one should not exclude the possibility to introduce a sui generis legal personality to respond to legal challenges that autonomous sex robots bring in the future. Ethical de-skilling happens when we do not practice virtues that are important in human interactions, thus run the risk of losing these skills as a society. Empathy is without question an important ability. It allows us to tune into how someone else is feeling or what they might be thinking. Empathy allows us to understand the intentions of others, predict their behavior and experience an emotion triggered by the emotion. In short, empathy allows us to interact in the social world, drawing us to help others and stopping us from hurting others. We need to keep practicing these virtues if we do not want to lose them. For example, iPads are coming back with pencils because Apple recognizes that the act of writing using the hand with a pen stimulates the brain and one is not likely to forget what they write. The same way with humans, the ability to form friendships and feel intimacy and empathy can only be developed through human interaction and mutual consenting relationships. Only when confronted with another human can we experience our humanity, our identity and our mutuality. Sexual behavior is not regulated as long as it doesn't inflict harm or endangers the health or life of a person. However, sex bots do not meet the criteria for personhood, they are not capable of being legally or morally harmed by the sexual interactions of their users. So how should we approach sex robots that imitate harmful sexual interaction? Sex robots designed to look and act like children test the moral limits of criminal law that is determined by the harm principle. Similarly, entirely computer-generated child pornographic images do not involve a real child subjected to sexually explicit conduct. Therefore, these lack a legal or moral victim as well. Yet computer-generated child pornographic images are criminalized in a lot of jurisdictions. The production, distribution and possession of these images cannot be considered harmful to children and hence the harm principle does not apply. It's a victimless crime justified by legal moralism. 
57 countries have ratified the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime that prohibits the production, distribution, and possession of entirely computer-generated child pornographic images. However, there is a difference we must consider. Depiction is unresponsive, passive, imposed, and unembodied. But childlike sex robots are responsive and interactive. Reason to prohibit childlike sex robots on the same moral ground as entirely computer-generated child pornography is that use is the embodiment of unequal and non-reciprocal sex act between an adult and a child. Sex robots, like a child, cannot give an actual consent to sexual activity. The question is how the law should respond when such objects are made for and used by those with a sexual interest in children. It has been widely suggested that robots could make ideal replacement for sex workers and most people find the idea of robot prostitutes acceptable. Research showed that prostitutes are not very good at showing their enjoyment in the act, but robot can be programmed to respond according to wishes of the user. Prostitution relies on having those with power view those without power as objects of their sexual gratification, which means the experience of a prostitute is not taken into consideration. Therefore, some suggest that prostitutes should be replaced with sex robots. Many sex workers are against the replacement with sex robots not only because it threatens their livelihood, but also because other critical social issues arise as a result of that. Prostitutes felt dehumanized of that idea and argued that sex bots are rape fantasy objects, that men can mistreat and abuse without any consequences. One could argue that this proliferation is going to aggregate the issues already brought about by pornography. So where should we draw the line? The sex robots supported by the bodies of sex dolls today have a few things in common. They are skinny with big butts and breasts and tiny waists. Majority of them are white and with perfect facial features. It is understandable that sex bot designers make what the market demands and this market is heavily driven by men. It begs the question, what do these designs do to actual women whose partners are so willing to pay so much to have sex bones instead? It might be damaging to women's image since none look like these ideal sex robots. There is a stereotype that black women are less attractive than their white counterparts and petite women are more attractive than those who are plus size. All those sex robots are doing is promoting those harmful stereotypes. In fact, in the recent years, plastic surgeons report a drastic increase in surgeries to alter body parts and for darker women even bleach their skin to attain a whiter complexion because this is the standard of beauty. These are unrealistic standards to uphold. And in this digital age, we are seeing more young people seeking cheaper and dangerous alternatives to surgeries or even take their own lives when they can't afford it. Sex bots in general are a controversial topic. And although this technology is in a primitive stage, the field is developing fast and there's a huge market for it. Last year, a sex robot named Samantha was molested and seriously damaged at a tech industry festival. The incident spurred debate on the need to raise the issue of ethics in relation to machines. What does it mean for society when people have humanoid dolls at home that they can just abuse? It's the responsibility of the wider international community to determine what is publicly and morally acceptable before stepping into regulatory territory. More women should be involved in research and technology design of sex bots because the market is highly male driven. Sex bots as they're conceived today are a divisive issue when it comes to whether they add value to society or not. Robots should be designed in a way that enhances human virtues and relationships rather than attempt to replace them.